Well, good morning, everyone. It is so good to see you here on campus and those of you joining us online. Uh, this is going to be uh, uh, an unplugged service, I guess, uh, is what they call them sometimes. So you're actually going to need a bulletin and a hymnal. Hello. I mean that. Uh, so this is a traditional service of lessons and carols. Today is the uh, fourth Sunday of Advent is the Sunday of love. So if you love music, then you are going to love this service. And in fact, I would invite you to stay for the 11 o'clock service as well, because the chancel choir is going to uh, share their cantata. So it will be a beautiful morning of great music. So as we begin our morning, let us pray. Holy God, your prophet Micah foretold with faith that a new ruler would come forth from Bethlehem. Today we celebrate the fulfillment of your promise as we hear and experience the story of the birth of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. May we sing out the good news of your salvation trusting in the fulfillment of your promises all this we pray in the name of the one who comes amen so as we have begun each service during this advent season with the lighting of the advent candles i want to invite randy and friends to come forward and uh, do that for us thank you randy i'm a friend yes and elizabeth thank you <laughs> A prophecy from the Old Testament as proclaimed by Micah. But you, Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely. For them his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace. Sometimes when we are trying something new or when we are facing a difficult decision or when we want to celebrate something or when we just feel lost and alone and uncertain about life, Sometimes, just sometimes, we need a blessing. We don't always think of it that way or word it like that. We say we need advice or support or companions or someone to come along beside and lift us up again so we can see more than the tops of our shoes. But what we are really in search of, what we really seek, is a blessing. For many of us, we go home. We ask mom, we talk to dad, a sibling, a best friend, a mentor, a spouse, a soulmate. We want them alongside. We want to be in their presence. Somehow we know that being there, being home, will make all things better. Maybe it won't be fixed or solved or wished away, but at least we won't be alone. We seek a blessing and a place to call home. Mary, faced with an incomprehensible burden and gift, she took Refuge at her cousin Elizabeth's house, looking for someone who knew a little of what she was going through. And while she was there, Mary received a blessing and a place to call home. The prophet Micah spoke of a blessing coming to an unexpected place, an unassuming town, yet by God's grace would become the means through which God would bless the whole world. Bethlehem, the little town of Bethlehem, a blessing, a place to call home. We light these candles, the candle of hope, of peace, of joy, and of today, love, as a sign that we know blessing and we still know waiting for blessing to be felt and lived. We light these candles as a sign that we still seek a blessing. It's time to go home. Today we light these candles. First, the candle of hope, reminding us there is always a way to go home. Next, the candle of peace, to give us comfort when the journey home is hard. Mm -hmm. 
Then there is the candle of joy to remind us of the welcoming light home, and it is pure joy. Finally, we light the candle of love as a sign the blessing that is and is to come. It is time to go home. So our opening song is hymn number 204. It is Emmanuel, Emmanuel. So you should find a hymnal somewhere close by, if not, certainly in the seats in front of you. And we'll join together in that song. Uh, 204. Do you want us to stand, Elizabeth, for this opening sure, one? Sure, let's stand okay. and sing together. Okay. <laughs> May be seated. So our first lesson, the start of the story, begins really in the Old Testament. So hear this word from the prophet Jeremiah, who offers us hope for a righteous branch, a just king who is yet to come. This is what the prophet foretold. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his day, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteous Savior. Our next carol can be found in your hymnal number 211. That's O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 211. We will be singing verses 1 and 4.
tells a wonderful story of the birth of Christ, beginning with the announcement that Gabriel, the angel, made to Mary. Here is how Luke tells it. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled as at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One that is, that is to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Please turn in your hymnals to number 216. We will be singing verse 2 of Lo, How a Rose Air Bloomin'. That's number 216, verse 2. In our third lesson, we hear of the birth of Christ, as Luke tells us. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Please turn in your hymnals to number 230. And let's join our voices singing verses 1 and 2 of O Little Town of Bethlehem. That's number 230.
After Jesus was born, the angels began to spread the word, beginning with the shepherds. Here's how that part of the story is told. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be to all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary she treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and had seen, which were just as they had been told. Our next carol is number 240, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. We're going to sing the whole thing. So that's number 240.
Matthew also gives insight into the birth of Christ, and it is there in his gospel where we meet the Magi. So hear how he tells of this encounter. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, What? Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was very disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, and by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for this child, and as soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star that they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming into the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. And they bowed down and they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Please open your hymnals to number 219. Let's join our voices singing, What Child Is This? We will be singing verses 1 and 3. That's number 219.
As we bring our service to a close, I want us to join our hearts and our minds in prayer. And I want to share with you just a few prayer concerns of our church family. We want to continue to keep Randy's sister, uh, Janet Watson, in our prayers. She has been in and out of the hospital. She is now out and uh, back at, uh, is it Brookdale? Brookdale. Uh, but Helen, which is why she couldn't be here today, Helen has been staying with Janet to uh, just give her a little extra help. So we want to pray for your mom too, Randy, uh, as she uh, cares for, for Janet. We want to keep Ann Walton in our prayers. That's Nanette Walton's daughter. Uh, she is still in ICU. I talked with the family on Friday, and uh, uh, she seems to be doing a little better, but definitely needs, uh, needs our prayers. And then my husband, Rusty, has asked for prayers. Uh, his first cousin, Mike, uh, was diagnosed this week with cancer of the lung, of the kidney, and of the liver. So we definitely want to surround him and his family with prayers. And then just a prayer of praise, Colleen Brooks' dad. Uh, Dennis had a very successful surgery uh, and is home from the hospital and is doing very well. And we celebrate uh, the, the wedded bliss of Charlie and Jackie Elliott. They celebrated their 25th wedding anniversary this week, which is just awesome. So we uh, celebrate their love and their example that they set for us. So now let us go before the throne of grace. Let us pray. Loving God, be with us this morning. As we hear of the wondrous news of Christ the Lord, remind us that each one of us is the bearer of your good news. We are called to proclaim hope, to proclaim peace and joy and love in your name. Open our hearts and our spirits to receive with great joy the love that you have for each one of us. Forgive us, Lord, when we take that love for granted and, we and when we gloss over the story and this season with so many trivial things. Even in the midst of this season of goodwill, we can become self-centered, thinking of only the things we want to get instead of the many ways that we can give to others. In spite of holiday cheer, stress and anxiety rule our lives. We miss the reason for the season, focusing instead on Christmas parties and long to-do lists trying to do the many things this season brings. We fail to think about your reordered world, a world where the lowly are lifted up, a world where the hungry are fed. Bring us home, Lord, to that quiet little town of Bethlehem, Help us adjust our Christmas priorities that we might join with you in preparing a world that welcomes the one who brings us peace and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before we uh, dismiss, I just want to share with you a few of the announcements, some of the things and the ways that you can connect in the life of the church. Uh, first, I just want to invite you to stay uh, through the morning and enjoy a beautiful cantata that Elizabeth and the Chancel Choirs have prepared to present and to share with us.
And then this afternoon, I'd love to invite you to our home. In fact, in the bulletin is a little flyer that gives you all the information. So we've opened our home this afternoon from 3 to 5 for an open house. And here is the address for you on this little slip of paper. So come. Kids are welcome. It is one level. Uh, it is not multi-story. So we are handicap accessible. So we want everyone to just come and enjoy uh, some good food and some great fellowship. And then tomorrow, uh, the Christmas wrappers will be here. So if you flip this little sheet over, you will see all the information. There are folks in this church who love to wrap Christmas presents. So you can come up here, uh, bring your gifts, and Santa's little elves will just be real busy uh, wrapping those presents. It's all day. It's from 9 in the morning until uh, 6 in the evening. So so come, come bring your gifts. Come enjoy uh, that gift. Uh, it is it is of no charge to you just a way to kind of help you along in uh, your Christmas planning and then we have two Christmas Eve services on the 24th there's one at four o'clock we will have a nursery for that service and then there'll be another one at six o'clock they're pretty identical uh, the music may be just a little bit different but the service itself will be uh, pretty ident uh, identical I've, I told uh, Rebecca that for me it's not to Christmas until we uh, stand together with our candles and sing Silent Night so it'll be all the traditional things we love and we will share in communion as you know in the Methodist Church communion is open to everyone so bring your family bring your friends and let us uh, celebrate the birth of Christ and then the last thing is that uh, next week we will have one service at 10 o'clock. A uh, service of cocoa and carols. It is going to be in the fellowship hall. Uh, I asked Judy Miller to help with the breakfast. I said, oh, just something simple, you know, just a little continental breakfast. And she has planned a feast. So, <laughs> so come uh, again, bring family and friends up. Uh, we're going, imagine telling the story of Christmas as a melodrama in the middle of a high school pep rally. Now, that's what we're going to do next week. It's going to be lots of fun. Uh, it, it's going to be some great singing and some just some participatory uh, fun. So come. It's casual. It will be wonderful. It's one service, 10 o'clock. So uh, that's, uh, that, these are some great ways, some fun ways, some family ways that we can celebrate uh, this Christmas season together. Well, let us close out in song. Uh, let's, let's see, what is our last hymn, Our Elizabeth? last hymn is, Oh, Come All You Faithful. It's in your hymnals number 234. And if you've really enjoyed singing these hymns, I invite you to join the choir on Christmas Eve at 4. It's a great time to join the choir because that way Christmas Eve would always be the anniversary of you joining the choir. Be so happy. Um, so let's stand and sing this together. We'll be singing verses 1 and 3.
I want to thank you all for coming this morning, joining in this story of scripture, of lessons and carols, as we have told and sung the story of Christ's birth. And now I invite you to go forth from this place, to take the light of Christ where you work, where you play and where you live, that you may be and bring that light to others. And may the peace of God be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>